Dejuit. Welcome to Merrily Merrow. This is the part where I forget what I'm saying. Today, I'm doing a vlog style, and it's not really about mermaiding. It is, but it isn't. So, uh, I'm going to show you this, the starting point. Um, I have a goal, you see. Uh, and I hesitate to say what it is, because the moment that I decided I wanted to attain this goal, it's like certain forces started to conspire against keeping me from it. So I don't want to, I know that sounds silly, but uh, I believe there are other forces in this universe that want me to attain it. And so the best way that I think I'm going to overcome my challenges and uh, my apprehensions with it is to vlog it. And those of you who know I am a hot mess, uh, my mom always described me as an artist's soul, and so there's an aspect to that that is just like the free-spirited, you know, creative, messy, what have you, but unkept, that leads me into, you know, the uh, procrastination and uh, hoarding and unhealthy habits that have not uh, done well to uh, further my progress in any regard. Uh, in 2020, uh, in March, the day before St. Patty's Day, um, I know this isn't actually what it was, but I felt like I lost everything. You know, I stopped, I couldn't go to work anymore, and that job was my livelihood. I was ice skating every week. I was mermaid swimming every week. I was doing yoga on a regular basis. I had just finished my yoga teacher training program so that I could uh, start teaching. And I had a, a weekly class that I got to teach. And I, I worked at a new age bookshop. And I, I did all of these things that really enriched my life. And, you know, quarantine happened and the bookshop closed. And I... Uh, there was no meetings for yoga teaching, and there there was no, you know, the rinks closed, and the pools closed, and like everything just shut down, and I didn't know what the hell to do, because I was, I was going to the gym on a regular basis, gyms closed, you know, like everything that I had made the effort to, to try and better my life and do, I couldn't do anymore, and it just, it, it was really depressing to me. Uh, my roommate, who, who kind of hates his job and spends most of his life uh, uh, building video games on his computer, uh, he kind of laughed at me. He was like, I don't know, you get a free vacation, I don't know why you're freaking out. But for him, the only part that he lost was the part that he didn't like. And for me, like, suddenly I was left with nothing but just myself and, and my own mess. You know, and everything that I had built to kind of restructure and give me time periods and stuff to, to do certain things and be productive in certain ways, those weren't there anymore. And so I just had, I don't know. And so I, I panicked for a little bit, but then eventually I found uh, a couple of YouTubers who uh, started to really inspire me and... Um, it was kind of when several of them were getting their start, but one of them was Catherine Morgan, and uh, Catherine Morgan does a blog on ballet, and uh, she has since really built her channel and started doing a lot of um, at-home workouts and bar exercises and, and things like that. And uh, keep in mind, at this point, I had never done ballet. I had never looked into ballet. I don't know, I didn't know. It was a very random decision, like, okay, what can I do that's going to strengthen me and allow me to uh, work out at home where when I get back into swimming, when I get back into skating, I'm gonna be in great shape for it. What's gonna help build my core? What's gonna help build my leg strength and my ankle strength and the dorsiflexion for, for wielding these monofins? What, is going to make me stronger and ready me for mermaid when I get out of here. And so I I kind of came to ballet. So I might as well come out and say it since 
the moment I booked a hotel, <laughs> I, I pretty much lost the job that would be able to afford me this uh, opportunity, or I walked out, but still the job has been lost, so we'll call it that, but, uh, but Catherine Morgan is doing an intensive for beginner adult ballet students this summer. And it's a week intensive for people just like me who love Catherine Morgan and all that she does and want to get into ballet but, but could really benefit from her instruction and the instruction of her peers. And it's a week long, or it's a, I think it's six days. Or, it's, it's five days. It's a six days that I blocked out to, to have days off. But uh, it's a five-day intensive, and I think it said that there were four classes a day. And one of the days, you get to go to the beach with them, and the others, uh, you get to go and have a dinner with all of the ballet students and Catherine Morgan. It's so magical, and it's right on the beach. So when you get done, uh, uh, I would get back to my hotel about 4 o'clock and then have the entire evening to go mermaid on the beaches in California, which I have not had the opportunity to do before. So it would be a half and half, part ballet intensive, part mermaid intensive, beautiful thing that, and they're only charging $1,000 for it. And usually, like, these intensives can, you know, they, they charge so much money for this crap, it's ridiculous. And anytime you are, you know, any sort of celebrity, they can just charge through the roof and, and call it acceptable. And I love that she's, the fact that she's making it at an approachable price for beginner adults, like, I have to try. For those of you who have been watching my channel, you know that uh, a lot of this channel is about transformation, uh, of course self-discovery and a journey towards health, right? So um, <laughs> without going further into it, or perhaps just uh, linking other videos that I've recorded rambling on about this, uh, I have some packages in the mail. and. Although these packages, the contents of these packages are not going to make me a better person. But they are a symbol of the change, the transformation, um, my willingness to be audacious and try new things, and I guess go where no one wants me do what I like, despite what anybody else thinks. And so, and of course, it's all in part of my journey towards uh, health and fitness, and I guess there's, <clears throat> there's only one way of going about this, it, um, this is gonna be some shit. <laughs> These are all from Amazon, so if you're not a fan of Amazon, and, and once you see what they are, you're gonna you're gonna roll your eyes for at me for getting these at Amazon. But I I get them here because I am a hack, <laughs> and I know that um, I have no business buying these. I have no business um, trying to make this something that I do. But you know what? That's exactly what life is about. I don't know, like, why we're all waiting around to be told that it's okay to do the things that we enjoy. And that when we maybe aren't terribly inclined, uh, t uh, terribly gifted at a thing, we just give up and we never try and do that thing. And that's being audacious and doing it anyway, even if you're no good and even if people don't want you there, that's the only way you're going to get better. So... These are the color and symbol of audacity. Behold, my Amazon point shoes. <laughs> I've never been on point. I don't deserve to be on point, but you know what? Years of wearing golf boots have messed up my feet and 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the correct um, posture and movement in my feet, just moving them around and not having any guidance. And so I know that sounds silly, but I've heard it said many a time that there's no way to really know how to be on point uh, without being on point. So I'm going to be careful. And I've been doing a lot of research but, um, but there's no way that I'm going to move forward with this without like, giving myself some sort of guidelines, you know? Um, ballet is a thing that uh, I learned at home over YouTube, and so I can think that I'm doing it correctly, but having some sort of guidance has already made a huge difference. And especially Catherine Morgan's channel, I've, um, has been a huge help to me, so in her coming out with her summer intensive, maybe I won't get to go to that, but I'm gonna act like I can, <laughs> and I'm gonna be audacious enough to try, and if I don't, I won't be any worse off than I am now, um, and if I do, I'll have done something I've never done before and something I never thought I could do. So let's check this out. Gotta get these big clod hoppers off though. Just came home from work. Really enjoying my new job. I'm not gonna say anything more there. Um let's look at this. Look at that fucking bright red. The satin is actually a, they're a much um higher quality than I was expecting. These were like, I think the total for these ones were $32, something like that. So typically point shoes are about a hundred bucks um, for a standard pair and more yeah, for a nice pair of stuff. Oops. So these are made by Ijanda, which I... I like this nice little box. I already, I like, I've seen uh, several different types of toe pads. And just a shout out, I know that if she were watching, she'd be cringing right now, but, um, uh, Josephine from The Point Shop has really, uh, taught me a lot about fitting of point shoes and the purpose of them and uh, her breakdown of how point shoes work has really expanded my understanding of ballet and how the legs and feet are supposed to work. Now, it's, it's common in beginner ballet to uh, break down kind of the, um, I guess, the motions or the moves, but very rarely have I come across anything that really delves into what your feet are supposed to be doing. And that's one of the biggest parts of how you control what the rest you're doing and so her channel has been um, extremely beneficial to me as well in just learning about point shoes and it's the only way that um, I was able to find uh, like the best option of the cheap options right so first of all uh, it comes with these silicone toe pads and these go uh, way high up which are gonna be good for what I now know are bunions that I have so another um, uh, uh, side effect of wearing like oversized clumpy boots your whole life is your feet form these massive bunions and uh, trying to like I guess grip to the shoe <laughs> as you're trying to function not to mention the fact that I found out uh, a few years ago that I've been wearing the wrong shoe size like my whole life and um, I've been wearing eight to eight and a half where I typically fit in a seven to a seven and a half. So um, that's messed them up as well, which is another big reason that uh, point shoes were such a consideration for me is uh, wearing ballet slippers is good, but I really do think that having that bit of guidance, even in just the line of the foot and being able to, to monitor that closely is gonna be huge in figuring out um, I guess, uh, how to do it properly and how these shoes break down and wear out is going to tell me a lot about my feet as well. Uh, a lot about 
um, uh, the where the pressure is, where the, the wearing and tearing is, and so it's going to be a learning experience as well, which is why I wanted to go with cheaper point shoes and not like Springford, uh, I don't know, whatever, it, probably Grishko's or Brock's because of my, um, <laughs> my Greek style toes, uh, as I've broken it down uh, from my living room, but in any case, we're going to try these bad boys on, and um, there's like a powder on this the silicone, but these are actually pretty decent. There's, uh, on the website, it looked like some of these shoes were like punchy cardboard. These seem uh, sturdy enough. It's got a big platform. Um, looks like it, it might be a little bit narrow on my feet here, but we'll cram it in there. And, um, Slight curve, um, very rigid uh, uh, shank. Um, it's not a terribly long vamp, right? Uh, typically, Russian style shoes go down. Uh, they tend to. A lot of Russian style shoes go down in this V and have a shorter vamps in the front. And I'm going to stop now because I, I don't know enough to, to tell you what I think I know. But um, this has led me to this style of shoe, uh, which is not as hefty. It, it's like narrower on this uh, top part than I've seen Russian shoes tend to be. But in any case, uh, we're going to try. And... They have also supplied me with, oh that's nice, uh, extra ribbon and thread of the same color. And red is, of course, not typical for ballet, but if I'm being audacious, I might as well be as obnoxious as it is somebody like me trying to get point shoes. It, you, like, let's go for gold here, right? <laughs> but, let's, uh, let's switch this up here. This is a horrible angle, but guys, it's the only way you're going to be able to see my these lovely guys here, huh? Yes. And so, not, <laughs> not much of an arch yet, but just wait and see. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping these uh, fit just fine. Oh, another thing to uh, point out, point out, ha, huh, about point shoes is there's no left and right. Uh, you just gotta figure it out what works best um, and declare which one is the left and the right so I don't know it's in... that looks legit and for whatever reason that looks wrong <laughs> the vamp is not the same length look at that look at the difference there so we're gonna we're gonna say this at least but um look at that that's not um there's a, a very noticeable difference in that one being taller but we're not gonna worry about it 30 bucks okay. and of course you see kind of the shape of this bad boy here grateful to have these guys coverage yeah, well, I have to always try on the right shoes. This one's even worse. Um, but that's why I want to make sure. Yeah. Actually, um, it fits quite nicely. It's very snug, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't pinch, and that's, um, it doesn't bunch up a ton when I show you my extreme ankle range here, um, but it does have real elastic straps. Oh, God. I don't know what that is for. <laughs> Why we need those? Um, 
And of course you're supposed to pull these bad boys. actually know how to tie these correctly so we're just we're just gonna tie them and I'll <laughs> I've seen it done where you tie these up and then you tuck it into the back I'm guessing that's how you do but I think I've messed up this part here so we're just gonna tie it all in a day They're comfy, but like they fit really nice. <laughs> it's much nicer than I was expecting. This one's got a little weirder thing going on with like the glue. I don't know if you can see that on the side here. So it's like a weird. Hot glue, something that gets pinched or so. Oh, oh, it's just a little, um, got a little broken. In there. That's that's not it. That does not bother me. That maketh me no. Never mind. I totally forgot. I there's more. <laughs> I'm so excited. They fit nice. I don't know how you walk in them, like. Like normal walking, you know? Like, how do you. I guess that's why you have to, to break them in, but. I don't know if you're. Okay, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna show you what my mirror says here. And that's not the mirror being nasty, that's actually paint. But as far as like, but it looks like being able to I don't feel like I'm sliding down too much they're definitely they're, they're awkward because I've never worn point shoes but I'll tell you a secret I'll tell you a secret um, when I first started doing, uh, um, like ballet classes in my, in quarantine in my room, um, I convinced myself that I didn't need point shoes. And then I set forth making point shoes out of duct tape and cardboard. So I made my own demi point cardboard shaped cups for my feet and... Um, these feel a lot better than that. <laughs> but wait, there's more! As a way to motivate myself as well. I'm sorry, but, you know, there's something to be said about dressing the part. So, you know, they don't entirely match. But I got the dance. <laughs> I got, um, oh, cool. I don't have to buy these. I was, yeah, that's, uh, that's handy. I got this. A leotard. 
And it looks smaller than I anticipated. Uh, that's no good. <laughs> Not that size, guys. <laughs> yeah, I keep dreaming. <laughs> oh, isn't this a medium? Shit. Oh. Every dancing girl is a princess. It's, a. Uh, with respect, it's an Asian brand. It looks, uh, it looks Chinese. Which just means that, yep, uh, Shenzhen Day Dance Cultural Industry Company. Which means that it's a medium in Asian societies. So, we'll see if this fits. It doesn't look like it. Certainly not gonna fit my, uh, posterior. But, you know, it's just the way it is. But look at this. Look at the back of that. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that nice? I'm gonna try it on and see how embarrassing it is. <laughs> not as good as I'd hoped, but not as bad as I anticipated. So, it fits, <laughs> technically. Um, that's a problem. Just like, I don't know how to describe it to you other than, you know. Um, I might even. Appropriate, but the back is really cute. And if I can tone up my butt and wear some leotards, maybe it won't be so bad. The front is pretty cute. Uh, let me just see if I can show you this in a not a weird way. So it, it does technically fit. Not terrible, really beautiful piece. If it was, you know, the bra pattern, the bra pads are definitely worth it. But it could have been worse. And if I do, if my regimen does get me in shape like I'm hoping, it's, I, I don't, uh, I'm happy with my size, like, size-wise, it's just some of the, the toning that could, some of the toning, you know, and some of it's just, it's not bad, I'm just not in shape. <laughs> and even just like looking at some of the, the pictures I was, I was looking through for, for hair, um, I don't know, hair inspiration? Looking at my past hair dyes and colors and stuff to see what I wanted to do. And I did notice that during the summer, I got more in shape than I kind of thought that I did. And so I don't, um, I don't have any unreasonable, uh, health or weight goals. I just would like to get, um, just a, a, a little more toned, a little bit leaner. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy. I think I'm a, a size like three or four. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that, you know? Um, so I, it just, I think... Obviously, practicing for ballet and stuff, uh, like I should be doing, uh, is going to get me into shape. And I've already taken steps towards trying to not really, like, refine my diet, I guess, and my, uh, um, like, everything I'm trying to say is turning out worse than what it is. Not, <laughs> I'm not ritualizing my eating habits, I'm... I'm meal planning and prepping. I do have to say, this is very satisfying. I have my almond milks here, juice, lemon water, green drink, iced coffee, ooch. Fruit, various things. Uh, but this is a breakfast shelf, right? I got fruit, uh, overnight oats. Uh, like banana mash protein powder peanut butter yogurt blend with a uh, almonds and flaxseed so I can put that on top of the oats avocados for the occasional avocado toast I got eggs boiled and non-boiled scramp uh, salad but this <laughs> it is done I'm just trying to, to get regimented, is all. I, I'm not 
like, I hope nobody sees this and thinks that there's anything, like, disordered about it, you know? I'm, I'm really trying to find the healthiest way to go about, um, getting in shape and, um, meeting my goals for this ballet, uh, intensive, and I, I'm not, I don't want to restrict calories or anything like that, I don't want to get, I don't want to get crazy with it, but, um, if I do apply myself and make sure that I, you know, eat healthy and work out, I should get a little bit more toned and a little bit more lean. And when I do, this is, is going to fit fine. It fits pretty much fine. It's just like, if I lost uh, five pounds, I'm sure it would fit finer. <laughs> but wait, there's more! If you call in the next ten minutes, the creme de la creme. Um, a lot of this was in a uh, relationship to, uh, I wanted to make, I guess, this video series uh, in relationship to my journey through quarantine and after with um, uh, ballet. And so of course, so of course I did watch a ton of Katherine Morgan's videos, a ton of uh, the Point Shops videos uh, during quarantine, and also, um, uh, the Salty Sugar Plum does some good videos, and, uh, um, after quarantine had kind of lifted, I got to do some, like, ballet classes with my niece, and I, I got her a leotard, and some shoes, and, um, uh, some tights, and we got together every Sunday, and, um, my sister and I have, would have a cup of coffee, and then, uh, my niece and I would practice ballet, and we'd, we do our warm-ups, we do our stretches, and, um, then basically just do, uh, demi-plies and releves in each position. Then we would do a few port de bras and practice arm positions, and then, uh, I think the only thing else we learned was susu and coupe, and, uh, she was 10, and she was such a sport, uh, but after about six months, she was, uh, I don't know if she was ever really into it, but she, you know, she was good to me about it. So we, we practiced and, uh, got to spend some time together, but there was one day where she kind of, like, she kind of shut down, she kind of got fed up with it, and I think the, the part of ballet that is corrective, she doesn't, she always feels like she's making a mistake, so she does not like to be corrected. She does not like to be singled out for anything. She doesn't, like, she wants to be the one who gets to tell you that you're doing something wrong. You don't, you don't do that to her, you know, and it's, um, just largely due to, a, like, a big control dynamic they had in their family going on at this, um, at the time. But basically, there was one day where she, I, I kind of said something to her, and she just, she shut down, and she went over to, uh, my sister and kind of like put her head in her chest and um, my sister comforted her and she's like you know uh, gave her words of support she said um, why don't we use these your like fearless essential oils right why don't we go get your essential oils for uh, that are for courage and it'll give you a little extra courage and it'll um, we'll get through this and uh, I know you're strong enough to do this. And so it, it was just a really sweet moment. So they went upstairs and they got essential oils. And this aside, I somehow, I, like browsing Amazon, I don't know how I got to the essential oils page, but I got to the essential oils somehow. Some way, by fate, I'm sure. Uh, not by impulse buying, but, um, but I found while I was there, uh, you're gonna laugh at me, um, like a fearless... Uh, blend and I looked at it and I really really loved it and I I went to their website or, or uh, kind of their page and saw all of their scent blends and I didn't buy fearless but it, it because it reminded me of this moment um, that I had or that I witnessed with my sister and uh, my niece which is probably like the just like this this tender little moment that I will never forget you know and I, I need some of that right now, you know? I need, just like, I need that, you know? I need to, alright, let's stop and take in some things that are going to give us the courage to, to do things that are difficult, you know? And be 
being audacious enough to try ballet as an adult when you're not, you know, I'm, I'm clumsy and, and not in ballet shape, I know that, but, uh, but I do have this, uh, this Himalayan salt ball that, that my cat loves, and I am willing to put in the work, and I'm, I, I do love it, I think, I, like, every bit of it that I've experienced, I've really enjoyed, and it's brought a lot of, it's a bubble wrap on this, uh, good to my life, so I need that moment where, you know, just a couple little extra, you know, things, smells, colors, <laughs> you know, just like, this moment kind of will maybe give me that courage that I'm lacking, right? The whole hair dye thing and the, the whole ballet thing, like all of it is, I'm, I'm trying to reconstruct myself and I, I see that the way that I've been going about living my life has not uh, yielded the results that I'm looking for. Some of it has been really wonderful and then some of it, like, there are some parts of me in my life that do need improvement, and it's not anything shoes are gonna fix, but um, it it's probably not anything smells are gonna fix, but it starts with something that you can manifest, right? And so I can fix my daily regimentation. I can fix getting up earlier, eating healthier foods, and trying to work out, and, and getting into ballet as much as I can, um, I can fix that, you know, I can, maybe I can't look as good as I want to all the time, maybe trying to go for the platinum hair that I really, really want, like, is frying my hair and making it fall out, but maybe if I just go for healthy and I just do what I can to be healthy, then I'll find whatever it is that I'm supposed to be after that, right? So, um, this is Meditation Synergy Blend. It is uh, the alarmingly small font here. <laughs> this smells wonderful. It, this is what I'm going to smell like now. So, I better like it. <laughs> Anyway, um, this is a part of it, and it's all a part of a bigger picture that I'm building. It's all a part of a bigger and better September that ever was, you know? But, uh, but going, continuing to strive for health, and I made a video, um, a mermaid video, when I got my Bath Life tail. Uh, about the blonde hair and going to henna and why I was doing it uh, because I I knew that it was something I needed to do and I just like you get so tangled up in these ideas right and and things that you think that you want and things that you actually do want that are, are not great for you and you can go for those things but it's what do I want more what do you want more you know, do I want that lovely hair and then, like, bald spots? Or do I just want healthy hair that looks nice, you know? I've let in a lot of, like, toxic elements to my life by not, I don't know, doing what I can to keep them out, you know? And it, it leads to things like depression, and it leads to things like bad body image, and it leads to things like behaviors that want to be toxic or self-harming. And no, I'm not saying that I've been doing self-harm, but it just, like, if you, you have to be careful with diet and exercise to make sure that it is balanced and not, you're not doing it for the wrong reasons. And you have to be careful anything dealing with the, with self-image that it's like a bigger concept that you're creating, and it's difficult to want to, like... Because part of me kind of sees myself as like an art project, you know? Like, I can... I can... I'm finding out how to shape and mold my body in ways that I haven't really been able to do before. I, I'm finding out how to do makeup in a way that'll... Uh, that can alter how I look. I'm finding out, you know, just little by little, and... 
it can be really empowering, it can be really wonderful, but if you... It has to be in the right direction. And so that's, that's what I'm trying to do, that's what I'm trying to go for, and that's why Catherine Morgan is such an inspiration to me. Because she's faced so much, uh, like, a lot of her platform is kind of fighting these elements, these toxic elements in the ballet industry, and trying to provide a space for people to enjoy ballet that isn't like that. And I really, really like that. I really, really support that. I think it's wonderful that somebody has the guts to do that, you know, because otherwise people like me, like, people, I... <sighs> I, I'm resisting a rant, but it's, I think it's happening anyway. Um, I think that, that in a lot of the, the things that I enjoy, and a lot of the, I, I hesitate to say hobbies, a lot of the areas of interest that I have, there's such an elitism, and this is probably for everything, I'm, I'm sure it is, but um, that if you're not the best of the best, then you have no business doing it. And I, it, what a horrible thing. You know, if you're not an extremely good artist and you just draw pencil sketches on paper that you shouldn't be able to do art, it's fucking horrible. And that you, if you're not the world's best cook, and yeah, it, you can hold two fucking saute pans in one hand, fucking, you can grab a ladle with tongs, but you do it at a slightly slower pace than other people who can do it, then you are no good and you don't belong in that industry because you are not as good as the other people in that industry. It's nonsense. It's absolutely nonsense that you can only do ballet if you're the best of the best, and otherwise you should just quit and, and you know, you don't have the perfect feet, so you might as well just stop. Like, what kind of a mentality is that anyway? For any craft, for any sport, like, I've been watching a lot of stuff on ice skating, too, and, um, kind of the recent developments in, in, like, the Russian ice skating, uh, scene, and just how people who are good at a thing and enjoy a thing can't do it unless, like, your only merit is if you're an Olympic gold winner, you know, uh, for an example. Your only merit for being a cook is to be Gordon Ramsay, and if you're not at that level, then you should just give up. Like, what kind of nonsense is that? What kind of nonsense is it that you... Like... <coughs> Sorry. I, I have to be able to believe in this world that you have a right to enjoy the things that you love without having to be absolutely fantastic at them. That you... <laughs> it's that you have the right to work towards a thing and to work to be good at a thing and to be good if you're not the best still work to be the best that you can be. That you can be. You know? That isn't... Anyone, uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, Catherine Morgan has been really firm on this on her channel. Just, like, be the best that you can be, and it doesn't have to be what everybody else is. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be the thinnest in the room. You don't have to have the best, you know, you, you don't have to have your leg the highest in the air. You don't have to be the best just to be able to enjoy it. And yeah, uh, you know, adult ballet dancers and people getting into ballet as an adult, they're, they're never going to have a career out of it. Why do we base our merit on, like, what a thing is worth to us, on whether or not we build a career out of it? Like, that's the only thing that, that matters to anybody in our society, and it, it, it's really painful to me, you know? The fact that, like, I still get a bunch of grief for not, like, being an artist as a career because if you're not an artist for your career then you didn't pursue it but like that's not how art works that's not how that's not what art is just because you don't have a career in it and, and don't get me started on why you could pass up a career in this oversaturated over marketed fucking uh, what it breaks my brain what what is it even called the 
Homo Globo. That's right, the art form that is like Google's art form and Fred Meyer's art form and every, every fucking, every chain's art form that is just like this soulless pictures moving around that advertises things. Like that, just because a person doesn't want to get into a career that is oversaturated with that does not mean that the art that they have done in their lifetime is worthless. You know, it's not the fact that we look at art this way, the fact that we look at passion this way is so wrong. It is so backwards that when I see somebody else fighting against that, I want, I'm on board with that cause. You know, I'm on board with people who are promoting just being passionate about the things that you enjoy and being deserving of that because you want to be, because you're willing to put in the work that it takes to be a part of it. And that that's it. That's all that it takes. So, um, so, so this is, <laughs> this is my first step. Maybe it's silly, but, um, I'm excited and I'm excited to get to be a part of this, even if I have no business being a part of it. Thank you for joining me.